Hello world, how's it going? I'm your host LR Bretz and welcome to another This Old Tank. And so this week we're going to do it a little bit differently. And I'm going to show you multiple tanks. Mainly because they're a lot alike. And they're going to be used for tetra breeding. Now this is a different method of breeding tetras. There are multiple methods. I have a a video about breeding them in mesh baskets, a video about making a tank bottom and making it mesh and trying to collect eggs. Some people use marbles, some people use rocks, some people just put moss up in an angle and they breed out them like that. Some people just move them over. But I wanted to try to do it more naturally. So let's check out these tanks. So the tanks are over here on my 20 by 20 long rack which is actually about to get a water change after this video which I was just gonna do this where it was just the leaf litter ones but I figured hey, I might as well just show the whole row you guys deserve it and here I've got some blood fin tetras and a bunch of peacock moss and I've got oak leaves scattered all about all these tanks have eco complete I do got a few scattered rocks just kind of give it a more natural feel these are well seasoned tanks as you can see by the sides there are snails in here i'm definitely pro snail over here i've got some red eye tetras and same kind of theme a couple scattered rocks more leaf litter and some of these leaves like this round one is a katapa leaf and then a bigger version of katapa leaf and I've also got piles of rocks in the back so they can scatter eggs in there. Fry can live in these piles of rocks. So they just throw their eggs or whatever. And yeah, do their thing. And some of you guys may notice these like worm castings on the glass and the rocks. This is actually from a small little gnat. I'm not sure what kind of little gnat or bug it is. It drops eggs in and then they leave these little castings. They're harmless and actually really good natural food for these fish. Like, they're plumped up. They were even plumper. I'm sure they're breeding in here. Supposedly red eyes, they will throw hundreds of eggs. So that would be awesome if I could just get like a few babies. And then you see the middle here, I've got a uh, airline with a sponge filter. Same with even over here in my more leaf littered tank. Also the deflector to help with the air bubbles. You can see it in action there. That's how it's supposed to work. Gives a nice little ripple effect across the water. And it's in line with the house line. And this is a soft water tank. So I am keeping it under 100 TDS. Maybe even less than that. I probably should go lower being these tetras, especially if I want them to breed. But the uh, leaf litter, it definitely helps with the acidity and the pH of it. I love how these guys swim in formation. And they can, they can swim in really tight groups. Almost better than the rummy nose, if you ask me. Then also I've got some pearl weed floating on top of these tanks and throughout it because since there's nowhere to really plant any plants in a tank like this, pearl weed is a great option because, because it can allow cover for the fish and also as it grows out becomes kind of like a marsh and will also create great cover for fry. And in here on this one, I've got a group of blood fins. Once again, big catapa leaves, small catapa leaves, and some oak leaves. And I just start chucking them in there. But I'm really digging these tanks. I mean, to me, this is all natural. Like, I really love the look of the leaf litter. And I've never really messed with leaf litter a whole lot. Like, I've thrown, like, yeah, one leaf or two leaf into a shrimp tank. But I've never really done it with fish. But I'm really digging it. Really, really digging it. And they seem to love it. Snails love it. Fish love it. The shrimp love it. I mean, look, you can see that's, that's stacked on there. And then the water quality is actually really great. I mean, keeping an eye out on their health. They look really healthy as far as fish can be. I mean, they've been super happy. 
Sure beats a tank at the fish store, that's for sure. As far as these fish are probably concerned. <laughs> oh, look over there. Look at them. It's not even morning time. Usually, tetras spawn in the morning. They're definitely displaying some kind of social behavior. But yeah, what's always fun about these guys too, I love these red eyes, and they'll eat, man. Look, I haven't... I'm, they barely even give me any time to get the food in the water. Look at that. Eat it down. Jump, 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 jump. That may have been too much. I'm sure they'll finish it. They are pigs, though. They love to eat. I've got snails in there and other microorganisms that'll eat all that small stuff. In this tank, I do got a little algae growing up on the top of it, but that'll all dissipate eventually. Once the plants start growing more. Algae is just usually a sign of imbalance. And the algae makes up for it. It's actually the great equalizer for keeping your fish alive and safe. These guys are a little more shyer during feeding time. Love the blood fin toucher though. I am also planning on adding some black worms to these tanks as well. All these worms are completely safe for the fish. They're completely safe for shrimp and they'll actually help eat up any broken down organics and they're actually really great for planar aquariums too they're kind of like having a earthworm for the garden these are the best worms you can get for that sort of purpose and it's just a great thing for shrimp and fish to eat on as well so these will be going in there as part of the ecosystem um, nom, nom, nom. And as far as the amount that's going to go in there, it's just, I'll probably put maybe an eighth of what's in here, in there. So you don't need a whole lot to get them going. Of course, bigger the tank, the more you'd need. So here's a good amount of them. And I'm going to just stick them in the moss area. Mostly that way they got a fighting chance. But they'll actually go down, live in the substrate. And they'll just kind of do their job, clean things. They'll live in there and, and they'll live in either soft water or hard water. They do just look like little miniature earthworms. And there's a lot of gunk, as you can see in the substrate for them to eat on. They immediately start searching for the bottom too. They love the leaf litter just going in and out of it. And the rest of that food. It's just a great place for fry to hide, too. Alright, so there it is. This is my new Tetra breeding row. Using leaf litter and some erect moss. A bunch of rock piles. And as far as the lighting, the lighting is a aqua neat, the blue and white spectrum you know we also got the same things gonna go down up here so there you have it for another this old tank i hope you guys may have learned something and hope you guys enjoyed it and if you haven't subscribed go ahead and hit that subscribe button that notification bell i'll keep you guys up to date see what happens with these tetras whether i get fry or not and also a bunch of other happenings that goes on in this massive plane and fish room so until next time, everybody, peace and love.